In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Discipline Priest in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, the best talents, the best glyphs, the best gear, the best professions, and of course the best macros to get you instantly ahead of all the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new Skillcapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now you might be expecting human to be the best race, but Discipline Priest is a bit unique. You want to be Night Elf on the Alliance side, and the reason for this is pretty simple. Shadow Meld, which can be used to stop incoming damage, drop combat for a drink, or even immune CC if you time it perfectly. Dwarf could be another option for the Alliance, especially if you're focusing on 2v2 arena, as this is incredibly strong into rogues and ferals. Stone form is going to cleanse you of all bleeds, poisons, and diseases, but it's not going to remove magical debuffs and curses. This racial can be useful in removing buffs such as wound poison or for dealing with feral druids. Now, for the horde, your best option is going to be undead. Will of the Forsaken is a watered-down version of the human racial in that we still need to use a trinket, but it can be useful as another form of CC break. Do keep in mind that this does share a 30 second cooldown with the PvP trinket. Now, while all three races are a solid pick for Discipline Priest, we highly recommend Night Elf as Shadow Meld is simply just way too strong to pass up. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. On the disc side of the tree, there are no changes that you're going to be making. All of these talents are fairly important as they increase our healing, and they also provide us our most powerful defensive, Pain Suppression. This is going to be crucial to surviving massive burst damage. If you watch our Discipline Priest course at SkillCap.com, you're going to learn how to use your defensives to deny enemy kill attempts like literally a pro. Discipline Priest also has one of the best offensive cooldowns with Power Infusion. This can be applied to a DPS to increase their spell haste by 20%. You can pair this with the cooldowns of your DPS to build massive pressure and close out games. Now we also have access to the Borrowed Time Talent, which provides us with 14% haste after casting Shield. This can be useful when you need to cast Flash of Light during high pressure moments. Now your flexibility comes in on the Holy side of the tree. Surge of Light and Inspiration are interchangeable. Inspiration is the default and is much more consistent as it provides a 10% physical damage reduction when you heal the target. Surge of Light is a bit more inconsistent as there's a chance to make your next Flash of Light instant cast and cost no mana. Now this is really just kind of a personal preference, but Inspiration is the default due to consistency. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed just a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone, but there is one adjustment you can make in the major glyph section that we're going to discuss a bit later. Your first prime glyph is Glyph of Power Word Shield. This is going to make Power Word Shield actually heal the target for a percentage of the absorption. You're then going to slot in Glyph of Penance. This will reduce the cooldown of our main healing ability by 2 seconds. We need Penance to actually top targets. Finally, you're going to pick Glyph of Renew. This simply increases the amount of healing done by your Renew. For your build, you have the same three major Glyphs. Desperation, Dispel Magic, and Mass Dispel. 
Glyph of Desperation is mandatory, as it allows you to cast Pain Suppression while stunned. This can easily be the difference between winning and losing a game. We then have Glyph of Dispel Magic. Anytime you dispel, it'll heal for 3% of the target's maximum health. Finally, you'll pick up Glyph of Mass Dispel. This is going to be good to have as it reduces the cast time of Mass Dispel by one full second. As an alternative pick, you can slot in Glyph of Inner Fire over Glyph of Dispel Magic. This increases the armor provided by Inner Fire, and if you find yourself being the kill target of melee, this can be a really good option. Finally, our minor glyphs really aren't all that important, but they can have just a minor, slight impact on the game. Glyph of Fortitude reduces the mana cost of Power Word Fortitude. This can be good into teams with a lot of purges. Glyph of Shackle Undead increases the range of this spell by 5 yards, and this can be good into Death Knights, as it'll allow you to shackle their gargoyle without having to get into Death Grip range. Finally, we have Glyph of Shadow Fiend, and this is going to give 5% mana back if Shadow Fiend dies early. This can be good since Shadow Fiend has relatively low health. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new Classic course. To start, if you're new to Priest or even new to Arena as a whole, and just wanted a one-size-fits-all easy way to incorporate Leap of Faith, then it's fairly simple, exactly as we see here. If your teammate gets stunned and you're not in crowd control, Leap of Faith them right away. Easy. Even if they reconnect before the stun ends, you're still reducing a substantial amount of damage and potentially wasting your opponent's mobility. Now, following this basic principle also enables us to execute one of the coolest plays imaginable or, um, well, at least in terms of a 15-year-old expansion, and that's Leap of Faithing Smoke Bomb. How this works is that Smoke Bomb is on the global cooldown, and as we just covered, Leap of Faith isn't. Rogues will generally only ever Smoke Bomb when the target is stunned for obvious reasons, and as a result, if you see an enemy rogue stun your target, especially with Kidney Shot, you have less than a global to react. If you're fast enough and are correct in assuming the rogue is going to smoke bomb, then congratulations. Now, if this were a few years ago, we would have seen you on Warcraft movies. Now, we've come quite a long way since then, though, so once you start coming against more experienced players, they're going to start trying to outplay your outplays. And there's one way to counter Leap of Faith, and that's with Roots. If your target is rooted, that's things like Frost Nova and Entangling Roots, then Leap of Faith it's just going to do absolutely nothing. So just bear this in mind for any time you're using the ability. However, aside from just gripping your teammates when they're stunned, Leap of Faith still has an abundance of other uses. If you remember from our previous video, Disciplined Priest tends to play with specs that rely on mobility in order to reduce the bulk of their damage intake. If we're able to track that mobility via an add-on like Omni CD, it allows us to use our Leap of Faith as almost an extension to that player's mobility kit, exactly as we see demonstrated here. If we pay attention, we can see that the mage gets death gripped by the Death Knight, to which he responds by blinking away. But the issue is the Death Knight's already closed the gap, which means at this point our mage is stuck and is undoubtedly going to take a lot of damage. Luckily, our priest noticed all this, and all he does is just leap of faith him to safety. Watching this, it may not seem like it did all that much, but I assure you, this singular play reduced more damage than any other cooldown in our entire defensive toolkit would have. And it's not even close. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. Alright, next up, let's go over your best in slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You will want as much intellect as possible. You'll naturally acquire this through your gear though. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 4% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss. This can be especially important as you have the opportunity to do damage as discipline. You'll then need 195 spell penetration, and this is going to ensure that your spells don't miss. After that, you'll want around 1500 Spirit. 
Spirit is tied to our mana regeneration, and it's going to help prevent us from going out of mana. After that, you want at least 3,000 resilience, although we do highly recommend over 3,500 resilience. Haste, Mastery, and Crit are your least desirable stats, but when gearing, you may want to opt for Haste pieces when you can't get Spirit. After that, you're going to look for Mastery and then Crit. In Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP. Discipline Priest is a common kill target, and you're going to be thankful to have the extra resilience. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Desecration set which is going to include the Vicious Gladiator's Mooncloth Robe, Gloves, Helm, and Leggings. You'll then use the standard Vicious Gladiator's Satin Hood over the Tier Helm, as we only need 4 Sat and the standard Helm has better stats. For your Off Pieces, you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion. Your Bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Cuffs of Meditation. You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Cord of Accuracy in the Waste Slot. And finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Treads of Meditation in the boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Reprieve in your off hand. The wand slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Baton of Light. For your jewelry, you'll pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Meditation. For your rings, you'll want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and Accuracy. And this is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, you're going to use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity. You'll then use the Dark Moon card, Tsunami. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can just drop this for a Battlemaster trinket. When it comes to reforging, we're not going to be doing much, but several pieces are going to be reforged to Spirit and Hit in order to hit our breakdowns. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP so it is going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders, and this too comes from PvP. Then after that, head to the Auction House where you're going to pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the kill target, the extra stats from Peerless Stats will be beneficial. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your Bracers, Mastery for your Gloves, and Lava Walker for your Boots. We recommend Tailoring for your Profession, which means your Cloak will be enchanted with Dark Glow Embroidery. This is going to allow you to proc extra mana. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful ghostly spell thread, and then put power torrent on your main hand and superior intellect on your off hand. Finally, don't forget to get an even steel belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in an Ember Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some intellect and increase your mana pool, which can be crucial in some games. In your red slots, you're going to have a couple of options, but your default should be the Willful Ember Topaz. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more healing output, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Purified Demon's Eye. This gives us spirit for our hit, along with a little bit of intellect for healing. And then in yellow slots, put Mystic Amber Jewel. This is going to give us a bit more resilience. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You're going to want to go Jewel Crafting and Tailoring. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Dark Glow Embroidery. This enchant provides a chance to restore some mana, which can help you avoid going out of mana in particularly long matchups. Jewel Crafting is our second pick, this allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. By default, you're going to use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more healing. This reduces our survivability quite a bit, but if you are confident you're not going to be targeted, then this can be a good option for some additional healing. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative. This is going to allow you to add a socket to your bracers and gloves and it is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, 
but it's going to be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro. First, you're going to want a Focus Shadow Word Death macro. Shadow Word Death can be used to avoid crowd control, as it has a delayed damage component to it. This means death is going to break you out of any breakable CC if you use it right as it hits you. You'll then also want to have Party 1 and 2 macros as a healer for both Dispel Magic and Leap of Faith, as well as Power Infusion. It's recommended that you have a Focus Mind Control macro. This is going to help you land CC on the enemy team, and you'll generally want to keep focus on the enemy healer. Now for your Shadow Fiend, you should have a macro that automatically makes your pet attack. This ensures that it goes on the target that you want it to hit. You can also make a party macro for power infusion, so you can continue healing or dealing damage without dropping your target. Finally, if you're looking to elevate your macros, you could take these and turn them into Arena 123 macros for Shadow Word Death and Mind Control. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.